We've been looking at uh, this diagram. It's from you know, that book by Dallas Willard, Renovation of the Heart, and he gave us this. We've been thinking about it where you, we can see the, the different parts of the human, these identifiable parts, just one person though, but we see that this is who we are. And the black arrow there is just how life can happen and the pressure of life and the pressure of our social relationships and the pressure of our body, even our thoughts can add pressure to where our spirit or our will gives way, it relents, we lose willpower, and we find ourselves doing things that we know are not the way of Jesus. And when we give in to temptation and when we sin against God and other people, of course, he's provided a way of repentance and forgiveness. He is faithful and just, will forgive us of our sins. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness, and he you know, picks us up, dusts us off, and says, let's go, let's keep moving forward together in life. He, this is what our Savior does. Uh, transformation is a lifetime endeavor. This becoming like Jesus is the pursuit of all of life's pursuits. It's the top one. It's the most important one. It's the one that will uh, bless you and bless those around you the most if you become like Jesus. And if you think that becoming like Jesus is impossible, well, today I want you to not think that. I want you to know that it is very much possible. And if you're thinking that following Jesus is impossible for you, maybe you're just mis misunderstanding the difference between impossible and opposition. There's, there's a difference between op being opposed, because you have forces at work in life opposing this transformation into the likeness of Jesus. Uh, but that's different than it being impossible. It may feel impossible, but it's not impossible. The opposition that comes your way, whether it's from the family members of your life or, you know, your work environment or, uh, you know, your own flesh is working against you uh, at times, clamoring for things that it wants. There, there's opposition, but it's, that's different than it being impossible. It is possible. Um, so how? You know, the question becomes, well, then how? How can we actually be transformed into the likeness of of Jesus, if it is the pursuit of all pursuits, if it is the thing that would bring the most uh, joy to life, it would, if it would be the thing that, you know, as the body of Christ grows around the world, if it would be the thing that would help the world the most, then how? I mean, how do we actually become more like Jesus? And uh, I come back to... Uh, Dallas's book here, because he gives us another thing that's very helpful. It's a word called vim. It's actually an acrostic. I actually enjoy acrostics. They help me remember things. But the word vim is not a word. It's an actual word. If you play it in Scrabble, you get points for it. It is an actual word, vim. And I usually think of it in terms of a phrase. You know, somebody has vim and vigor, right? There's vim and vigor there. And the word vim, if you look it up, it actually means robust energy and enthusiasm. So the word on its own is pretty awesome. I like the word enthusiasm all the time because enthusiasm, the, the root of that word is, you know, in theos or in God. And as opposed to being excited, you can be excited. To have enthusiasm means you're, you're excited, you're engaged it, uh, about something that God is in. So enthusiasm for kingdom of heaven purposes is just a perfect word because we should be enthusiastic about the things of heaven and what God is doing in our lives and in our church, what he's doing in our city and county, right? And then when the concerns of the world and the concerns of our life happen, we can still have enthusiasm because we can talk to a father in heaven who sees what's going on and we may not have the answers but we know that he does, and we can pour out our hearts to our Father. So this is a great word, vim, and it's an acrostic, right? So the acrostic, what, the, what it stands for are these three things, vision, intention, and means. And all three of these, we're going to talk about them today, all three of these are needed if you're going to accomplish something and make a change in your life. All, all three of these things were needed. If I was ever going to learn to play the guitar, 
I would need these three things in order to actually become accomplished and be somebody who could pick up a guitar and make beautiful music. I would need vision, I would need intention, and I would need means. Now, to have only two of the three, I think, is part of the problem. You can have two of the three, but then it doesn't happen. And in following Jesus, it's, it's very similar. It's like if you only have two of the three, you might be, it's might be why you're back for a fourth time going to try this again, because maybe you only had two of the three. Any, any life change you want to make, you want to improve your finances, you want to have a better marriage, you want to raise your kids in a, a different and better way, any, any significant life change requires these. And so I hope that this encourages you to know that when it comes to any significant life change, but especially when it comes to following Jesus, it is not impossible. It is very possible for you to be a follower of Jesus who reflects his glory and experiences all the joy that comes in knowing Christ and that the people around you are blessed. 